welcome back to Questioning Sense with me, Matt. Today I'm going to be channeling my inner Russell Crowe. We're going back to ancient Rome for a story of gladiators and battles and of course Oud. Now obviously we're not going to be uh, letting loose the lions or fighting barbarians or anything like that but we are going to be talking about a very very special fragrance. Um, from uh, a British house called Electimus, and here it is. This is a Gladiator Oud. Now, I was very uh, lucky to be invited to the launch of this fragrance, um, and this bottle was gifted. And in fact, they've even engraved my name on it, which was very kind of them. So I thought it, the best I can do is, is talk about this rather magnificent perfume. Um, there is a bit of an elephant in the room with this one, um, and that's cost. Gladiator Oud costs £395 for 100ml, um, which is this beautiful bottle, which is easily the heaviest bottle I own in my collection. The, you know, the, the presentation is pretty spectacular, and so is the perfume. So, when we're talking about a fragrance this expensive, we have to then look at value, don't we? Because, I mean, that's a lot of money. Um, it really is a lot of money to pay for a fragrance. So, you know, it's not one that you'd be blind buying, obviously. Nobody in their right mind should be spending that kind of money without sampling a fragrance first. And I implore you to try this because if you're not going to buy it, that's fine. I don't have any issues with that at all. I think there's a very select um, few people that will actually pay that kind of money for a fragrance. If it was down to me to buy it, I don't know. Um, having had it for quite a while and worn it on numerous occasions, I do feel that it, it represents value. Um, but it is a lot of money to pay for a perfume. I get that. We can't ignore that. You know, but Electimus are a luxury house and they're, that's their their kind of marketplace. They're in there with the likes of Roger and Ex Nilo and, and people like that that are making these expensive perfumes. But what I appreciate about this one is obviously the presentation is fantastic. It should be. The box it came in was rather, rather lovely. Um, but because I was at the launch, I got a chance to smell some of the materials that were isolated from the actual perfume. So they had um, the component parts of the perfume at the launch broken down, so I got to smell this and smell that. And they tend to have used um, supply from a company called LMR, which are based in grass, and they're kind of one of the top companies in the world at producing naturals for perfumery. So an awful lot of time and effort and thought has gone into the breakdown of this fragrance and then the sourcing of the materials. You can start to see where costs start to come up in, in terms of the product. The nose behind this is one of my favorites and that's Julian Rasconet and he has created something very, very special. So the ethos of the perfume is it will take you back to sort of ancient Rome, to the smell of the air. Uh, the Colosseum, the gladiators, the sweat, the blood, and well, no blood actually, thankfully. Um, but you know, that sort of manly environment, you know, where gladiators are out there doing their business. And they've created a fragrance that is devoted to that. Um, and it is a magnificent perfume. I absolutely adore it. Um, and I'm very, very lucky to have a bottle. So I thought I'd talk about it today. And what we'll do, usual format, we'll go through the note listings, we'll break it all down. Um, what does it smell like? How does it perform? Who can wear it? That kind of malarkey. So if we start with the bottle, and I know I've mentioned this, this weighs a flipping ton. It really is heavy. I mean, the cap alone is just so weighty. The, the presentation is second to none. I've got Roger bottles. I've sold Roger bottles. Um, they don't compare to this in terms of quality. This is fantastic. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's a joy to take a photo of. It looks amazing in my collection, and I absolutely adore the presentation. So now we'll have a look at the note breakdown. So we've got quite a few challenging materials in this perfume, but my gosh, they're brilliantly put together. On the top, you have cumin and saffron. And then in the midst, you have hay, you have immortel, you have honey, and you have geranium. And then in the base, you have this oud, a very natural smelling oud, which I'll get back to. Then you have ambergris, you have cedar, you have patchouli, you have Haitian vetiver. A lot of these, not all of them, are naturals. So you have a really good balance of natural and synthetic materials in the fragrance. I think the overwhelming feel and smell of the perfume is more towards the natural end of it. And it does smell very, very precise. It smells rather, rather wonderful, but it doesn't smell synthetic at all. It smells like an all natural perfume, even though it's not. And I have to go back to the Oud. When I, you know, we are 
as consumers often told a perfume has oud in it, how much oud a fragrance actually has in it. If it's real oud, if it's just like plantation oud or boya, or if it's a synthetic compound that mimics oud, we never really, really know. And that, I don't know, it should bother me, but it doesn't really, because ultimately when I buy a perfume, and I'm sure you're the same, you're buying it because of what it smells like. I never get caught up or dragged into this whole naturals versus synthetics business because I, I, I don't care is the, is the honest answer. If a perfume smells fantastic and gives me the performance that I want and one thing I do um, t have quite some sort of passion about is the value to money. I don't mind spending a lot of money as long as I'm getting what I perceive to be value for that money. So if a, pro, if a perfume is full, chock full of naturals but only lasts me 20 minutes, I'm not interested in it. And if that makes me a Philistine, that makes me a Philistine. I don't really care. It's my money, it's my perfume that I'm buying. Um, if you put a perfume in front of me that's completely 100% synthetic with lots of like clever aroma chemicals, I really like it. I love those sort of fragrances that's kind of where my passion lies so you're never going to get me bitching about oh there's not enough of this in it there's not enough of that in it I don't really care as long as the perfume smells fantastic but with Gladiator Oud and its hefty price tag I think the house were very keen to show just how many naturals and such high quality and rare materials were used in the fragrance and the Oud especially it's an LMR isolated Oud and it's beautiful it's incredibly smooth it's not animalic it's not barney it's just a deep rich resinous oud and as an oud on its own as an oil when i got to try it it was fantastic and it is blended so well into this perfume it really fits the bill perfectly so what we'll do is i'm going to spray a little bit now and i mean a little bit this is one of the strongest perfumes if not the strongest perfume i own so performance wise you've got no issues at all in fact the performance on this causes more issues than if it was a weaker fragrance so let me give it a quick spray then we'll let it settle down and then we'll talk about the perfume okay here we go so fantastic spray a really fine mist the atomizer is perfect so the first thing that happens as it hits your skin is you get this kind of dusty vibe. It's a sweetness from the saffron, but the cumin gives a masculine edge. Some people are gonna say it smells like BO because cumin can easily do that. For me, I don't get that. I get spices and I get masculine spices from this. As it will start to develop, you'll get the oud, and the oud is rich, it's indulgent, it's deep and it's dark and it's like a polished wood and it runs all the way through this. There's almost a slight sourness in the opening that you'll get from that cumin, whereas the saffron's really sweet, it's nicely balanced. And then things start to get quite clever because you've got hay, which gives a kind of a grassy feel. It doesn't really, you know, I don't smell the fragrance. I think, oh, well, there's the hay. You get this kind of grassiness to it. But there's honey and there's immortelle. Now, immortelle is a really clever material. It's one I really, really enjoy because it, it almost has a, like a maple syrup-like smell to me. And when it's used here with the spices, it balances it out really, really well. And it competes with the honey to take over like the top spot of the sweetness of the fragrance. But the geranium keeps it real. It's lovely. And then of course, this oud is always present. You know, some people are saying, I only really get it on the top. But for me, I, I get it all the way through the life of the fragrance, which is extremely long, by the way. And as that develops, you will just become aware of all the various nuances. The ambergris adds a saltiness to it. There's no seed like a cord or anything like that. It just keeps everything in balance. And what um, Julian Rasconet has done, He's managed to take a lot of expensive materials and give them all a chance to shine. So everything kind of floats around in this ultra uber masculine fragrance. This really is a man's man's fragrance. It's really bold. It's really outstanding. It's really noticeable. Um, and because it's got all these balanced uh, materials in the perfume nothing really over dominates for me i think it's an incredibly special fragrance and what i'm really happy about is the fact that it's not another rose oud they've made a beautiful oudy fragrance which does actually kind of if you use your imagination and close your eyes take you off to ancient rome it, you know it's it's it, it sets out and it achieves exactly what it wanted to do. It really does have that kind of feel to it. But I cannot get across to you just how masculine this perfume is. It is very bold and it is very bare chested, bash your chest kind of thing. So it's it's a guy's perfume. And I, you know, if a woman wants to wear it, good luck. Cause it is, I mean, if the right woman wears it, I reckon it'd be amazing. But it 
It is such a powerful perfume. It's really easy to be worn by the fragrance. You've got to be very, very careful with it. I've come unstuck a couple of times. Um, a very dear friend of mine, my son's godfather, came round to take him to football. Um, and he said, so I showed him it and he said, oh, right, lovely. He had two sprays of it and off he went. And my son came back laughing saying someone stopped on the bus and said, well, someone's put too much fragrance on this morning when they were on their way to football. So, you know, it can fill a room very, very easily. I had a cold um, a little while ago and I wore this to do the school run to pick my son up. And one of the dads that I chat to was like, bloody hell. What's that aftershave you've got on, oh, man? That's bloody strong. So I realised that very quickly that I'd oversprayed it. So this is like a one or two sprays, and I never say that, but if you just put a shot on your chest, you're good to go. Um, but it is such a, an all-encompassing fragrance. It lasts forever. The projection is ridiculous, and the sillage is really, really strong. It leaves a trail miles behind you. So you have to think about where you're going to wear it. This isn't a fragrance that I would wear to work. I mean, I could probably get away with it at work but I, I would not wear this to the office it's just a bit too much I wouldn't want to be sat next to somebody all day you know wearing this I mean actually saying that I probably would because I love the fragrance I think it smells amazing but if you know it can be a little challenging for other people because it's so bold um, and it doesn't shy away from that oud note that's in the perfume it really celebrates the oud it shouts it out um, and it's just a well-crafted luxury fragrance. So in closing, I suppose we better look about what I think about it. Well, I think the perfume itself is magnificent. I love it. I think it's so unique. I don't have anything in my collection that smells like this. This is something that I think, you know, like Amoir's Jubilation should have been or could have been, although saying that they have the, the it's been reissued with, with a higher um, concentration. So that may have sort of fixed the performance issues with Juby, but they don't smell alike. This is unique. This is not a clone of anything. This is a standalone perfume. It's incredibly potent. It really is super, super strong and it smells divine. I love it, but it's very, very masculine. And it's because of its strength and because of how masculine it is, I have to think very carefully about where I'm gonna wear it. So this isn't an everyday perfume for me personally. If you're really super bold, then you probably could wear it as a daily driver, but it's super strong and it's really, really noticeable. So I tend to wear this when I'm off out somewhere specific. I don't wear this one for work um, very, I think I have worn it for work once, but I don't, you know, I work on my own anyway, so it's not a problem. Um, but even then it's it's quite, quite strong for work. So I tend to not wear it for then. It's like if I'm going out with my mates for a drink or something like that, that would be the time that I wear it. Or if I'm like going to a football match or something like that, I would I would wear it there because it is really really strong and it's very very easy to to overspray it in terms of value i think it is an expense well i know it's an expensive perfume but it, when you put together the package the presentation the quality of the materials the performance that you're getting for your money i do think it's worthwhile and i do think it's a fair price but it is an expensive one i get that um, so I think in terms of value, yes, it is just about there, but it is really expensive. So, you know, do not blind buy this. Um, so, yeah, I get it. I mean, I'm not a massive fan of the luxury end of fragrances, I think. Um, it just, just, I don't know, it's just in, in the real world, £400 for a fragrance is an awful lot of money. Um, you could do a lot with that. I'm a father. I could do a lot with my son or I could buy my wife something really, really nice or, you know, fill the bloody larder up in these uh, testing times. So I do struggle a bit with the price, but I do think it represents good value um, just in terms of the quality of the perfume. And when you couple that with the staggering performance, the beautiful presentation, I think it is really good. But... I do love the perfume. I think it's beautiful. I think it's really clever. And I think it's so well put together. You don't often get these sort of bold, unabashed masculine perfumes anymore. Um, and I think the right person will love it. I think everybody that appreciates perfumery and the art of perfumery will really enjoy it and think it's a very clever fragrance um, because it is, you know, there's no, no getting away from that. It's full of naturals, it smells divine and it lasts forever. So. You know, you have to balance all these things together. So I think it is a fantastic perfume and it is one that I absolutely adore. It's just one that I don't have that many occasions to wear, which is good because it means it will last me forever. Anyway, there you have it. My take on Electimus Gladiator Oud, an absolute powerhouse 
of an oud based fragrance full of naturals and a lot of fun. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you very soon upon the next one. Cheers, thanks and bye.